We haven't built a computer in a while and it's time to remedy that right now. So everyone's freaking out about the GPU prices and I have, I have no idea what's making those prices go up. Guys, we didn't uh, buy these things to mine, but if you got them, mine with them. Moving right along. Right now, um, it, the prices are still crazy and uh, you, can, you can grab like a 1050, a 1030, and you can play most games at 1080p just fine right now. Those prices have come back down. So if you're looking for those, check it out. But I've got another idea. Let's take a look at this. This is a B350M motherboard from MSI. And with that, you can couple one of the new Raven Ridge CPUs from AMD. So in this video, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what Raven Ridge is and why it might be an interesting step into you know getting a computer. Now you won't be able to play games at crazy resolutions, but you'll be able to play your games. And then as the GPU prices come back down, you can add a GPU onto, onto this and have a really nice computer. So first off, you've got the Raven Ridge um, Ryzen 5. It's AMD Ryzen 5 20, uh, 2400G. That's the, the big one. And it goes up to 3.9 gigahertz. It's four core, eight threads, and very actually similar uh, in performance to the 7700K. It's a little bit slower in a lot of the tests because the 7700K can overclock more, but with a little bit of an overclock and um, a, a dedicated GPU, it really does a good job. So moving down from that one, you have the Ryzen 3 2200G. That's four, four cores, four threads, and it'll go up to 3.7 gigahertz. And again, you can overclock this. Now, both of these have really powerful APUs, like extremely powerful that blows anything from the past out of the water. And it beats the old AMDs, which means it handily beats any of the new Intel stuff. So on the 2400G, you've got 11 compute units uh, and 704 stream processors. On the 2200G, you have eight compute units with 512 stream processors. So both of those are gonna be better than anything you're gonna get with the Intel. Now, let's just get down to business and talk about what, what you can get if you build a computer. All right, so right now, what I'm suggesting, if you're on a budget, is to go ahead and build one of these. They are faster than the i3. I'll get to that in just a second. Um, pretty much all the i3s except the 8350K, but that's more expensive part. Um, and they are going to be faster depending upon the RAM you get. So you have to get good RAM. We're gonna be using this Vengeance LPX. Uh, it's a DDR4, 16 gigabytes of that, two sticks, and it's 3200. Now they say they don't support 3200 on the box, but with overclocking, it can easily do 3200, but at least, uh, you know, try to get 2800 or, or higher because the, the better the RAM you get, the faster it's gonna be. Onboard GPU is gonna be heavily reliant upon your RAM. We're talking like 10, 12 extra FPS if you get RAM that's a thousand megahertz higher. So the faster the RAM you can get, the better. Um, and then just make sure your motherboard can handle the overclocking in this MSI. It's like, no problem. Why is he from Brooklyn? I don't know, that's no problem. Now the rest of the system you can build any way you like. Uh, this will hold an M.2. So if you want to get an M.2, uh, you can grab one of those Samsung M.2s, uh, whatever brand you like really, but uh, I like those particularly myself. Grab one of those, put it on here as your main drive. Uh, and then there's actually some software that'll speed that up a little bit. Uh, MSI's got a nice software package, but it's um, something for a video dedicated on this if we do one later. You're gonna need some storage to play your games. Now the Toshiba drives are at a really good price. The one terabyte's a pretty good price. The two terabyte's a very good price. The box is empty. This box is not empty. You haven't opened this one yet. If you want a little bit more space and some just really nice reliability, uh, the four terabyte HDST NAS drives, they'll work just fine on a regular computer. They're a really good price, but the NAS drives are um, built for heavy use and they're fast and they're just all around good drives. So grab one of those. Now for your power supply, Take a look at the EVGA stuff. It is a nice low price, but it's also performant and uh, decent 80 plus rating. So check out the EVGA power supplies. You're only gonna need about 500 watts for a system like this. If you want to be able to future-proof it as far as like adding multiple graphics cards, 650 will be just fine. The sweet spot is trying to um, find a power supply that will work with this and uh, you wanna draw about 80% of the power. That's where it's really the most efficient. So. 500 right now, but if you want to go a little bit crazier, 600, I'm not going to argue with you, 650 or something like that. Um, above and beyond that, there's a lot of different cases out there. And what I'm going to do, because case is very subjective, and I'm mostly going to want to get into the performance of this, this chip. Um, for the cases, I'll, I'll list a couple on the website, and you guys can pick the ones you like the best. Um, but the main thing is just make sure they got USB 3 on the front, make sure they got all the ports you want, and make sure that they are they have some decent airflow. But really, you can get, get by with a $30 case. Um, and since this is a micro ATX motherboard, 
you'll be fine with a small case. All right, now let's talk about the performance of these parts. So the 2200 um, is very similar in specs to Intel's i3-8100, except the 2300 uh, can be overclocked a little bit more, and it's got that really powerful APU. But just from pure computing power, it's similar uh, to that one. Now, however, it's gonna be a little bit faster than that one. Not as fast as Intel's 8300 or 8350K, that thing is really fast, uh, but it is really damn fast. Now, the 2400G, uh, now I mentioned that that one can be up to the speed of around a 7700K, and that is with a dedicated GPU in some tests. With the productivity and stuff, the 7700K still has an edge, but the price difference is really nice with this one. It's not gonna compete with like the big 8700K, uh, but I I would put it up against maybe um, an i5 8600K. i5 is gonna have a bit of an edge, but this has a bit of a price advantage. All right, so if you guys wanna play The Witcher 3 or some of these like brand new crazy games, you're really gonna have to run these things at low settings, 1080p or 720p. Now The Witcher, 720p, low settings. Here it is on the screen. This is what it looks like on low at 720. It's actually, to me, looks about like a console or maybe even a little better than a console, even at the low settings. So this is a hell of a game. Now this will run in the mid 40s. Um, so you'll be able to play this with just the, the CPU, no problem but you're gonna have to keep it at like 720p. I got a secret for you guys. Sit back from the screen, put your computer in your mouse on your lab, and then things look a little little better because you're farther away. <laughs> That's my secret for playing games in, with low sh settings. All right, Mankind Divided at 720p on medium will actually play uh, at about uh, 50 FPS. Yeah, it's about 50 FPS. So then this is what Mankind Divided looks like at 720p. Again, it's not the best. There's a lot of jaggies, fellas, but you're playing a game and for some of these games, it's more about the experience. I'm trying to make you guys feel better about not being able to buy a GPU. All right, last up, Tomb Raider on a DirectX 12 720p, getting about 46, 47 FPS on the medium settings. Now you may be able to turn this up to 1080p and then change the settings to low, but 720 medium looks all right. So that's really what you can do with this. Now, here's the thing. If you add a GPU, well, all of a sudden, you're competing with 7700Ks, 6950, X even will compete with that. Um, you're not quite competing with the 8600K or you know the 8700K, but for the price, you know you can really compete. So here's my idea: go ahead on a budget and grab one of these. I mean, Dota and all that kind of stuff plays just fine. You can play Dota at 1080p, medium settings, over 60 FPS, just fine with this, with with this. You can play you know League of Legends. You can play World of Warcraft. You can play a lot of games like that just fine, but you get this now, start playing all your games, you save some money, and once the price of the GPUs becomes reasonable again, then you can grab one of those and put it in here and breathe new life into your system. And this is a system that should last several years uh, because the CPU power is pretty decent. Now, if you're building like a rig for uh, productivity and stuff, the 2400G is not bad. It's, it's you know, eight threads, four cores. You can do video editing and that's, that sort of thing on it. But if it's gonna be your primary function, uh, you're gonna need some more cores. Uh, one other thing, I've been comparing this a lot to Intel stuff, and some of you guys who are complete Ryzen fans want to know how it is compared to the Ryzen stuff. Well, with a dedicated GPU added in, it's actually very similar in performance to like a 1800X in some games, 1700, 1600X, all those have very similar performance, and it fits kind of right in between the 1600X uh, and the 1700 uh, as far as where the performance goes with the dedicated GPU. And like I said, overclock a little bit, and you'll be in good shape. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about this motherboard. So with the uh, MSI, the B350M Gaming Pro, this is what happens when you try to min-max a motherboard because they've removed a lot of stuff that you don't need. I mean, some people think they might need it, but they've removed a lot of the stuff, but they've also given us really high quality components for what's here. Uh, for instance, we only have two RAM slots, but you can get to 3200 uh, with overclocking. Uh, you can still overclock. A lot of that has to do with the way they've they've done their load line calibration and that sort of thing. But you know, you have enough phases here to do a little bit of an overclock. As far as the SATA ports go, uh, you've got four of those right here. And I don't think I've used more than four in a long time. So they really didn't add anything you don't need. Plus right here, you've got an M.2 slot that'll hold up to an 80 millimeter uh, you know, SSD. So that'll work just fine right there. You got your front, front panel uh, USB 3. On the back here, as far as our USB goes, I mean, I could probably use more USB on the back. Also, the audio on this, you have dedicated audio 
uh, channels and it's separate, you know, separate piece of PCB. You've got audio capacitors and all that sort of thing. So the audio is going to be nice and clean. And plus it'll do 5.1. Doesn't look like it, but it will do 5.1. Now this one's interesting. It doesn't have display port, but you do have the, um, you know, the HDMI. And then of course you've got VGA and uh, DVI right here. And then we have a combo PS2 port. So all that's on board. And even though there's only uh, one of the big PCI Express 16X slots, it does have the steel armor on there, so you can put the really heavy graphics cards in here and not worry about stress. Now the steel armor, they have really done a lot to solder this onto the back, so it's very reinforced. Now as far as uh, customization goes, you guys have all the options for like RGB and that sort of thing. Uh, it will hook up to your case, use the, the Mystic lighting, and you can also control this with the app or remote control. So that works just fine. So one of the other things I like about this is in the BIOS, you can go in and set profiles for fans and all that sort of thing. Um, you can control a lot of this stuff in the BIOS instead of having to rely upon the software, but they do have software um, for overclocking, like they have you know gaming modes and all that sort of thing you can set up. So it's pretty easy to use. And again, the, the main idea with this for me is this is what you get when you min-max a motherboard. So I really like this one. And also I like the, uh, the B350M uh, motherboards quite a bit better than a lot of the new stuff that's out there. So. That'll work really nicely with the 2400G. And then, wait a little bit, get a graphics card. So how many of you guys out there are gonna be running an APU system? I'm, I'm curious. Uh, do you guys see this as something viable? I think it's a really viable option for budget gaming computers. And if you guys want some, um, I, I guess if you guys want some advice, a lot of people out there are just, they only think about the brand new AAA games and they, they forget that there are gazillions of games that will work perfectly fine on this and there's a lot of old games that will be amazing for this you guys probably have a backlog of games that'll work perfect perfectly on this 2400g so get into those if you guys need some tips hop on the forum and i will just jump on there justin will jump on there pistol will jump on there and we will give you guys some ideas of games you can play on this and have tons of fun until you get a gpu so that's the state we're in right now it's not the worst state to be in, being forced to play your backlog. Some of you guys need this. I right, said, so that's it, guys. Uh, be sure to go over to epicpants.com. The new store is 942% better. Uh, we are in complete control of everything now, meaning we can take cryptocurrency. We've got everything all set up, and I've lowered the shipping prices on everything. Plus, there are new items on there, some new DIY kits for, you know, Senpai, Raspberry Pi, uh, Arcade. There's also some Lego compatible blocks for you guys who love fun. We know you guys are awesome. And then, of course, t-shirts are all on there. And again, shipping price is way lower. So check out epicpants.com. We'll see you guys later.